For more than 120 years, the covered bridge that spans the Connecticut River between Cornish, New Hampshire and Windsor, Vermont was America's longest, until this one in Ohio took that title in 2008. On the other hand, Windsor will always hold on to its title of the birthplace of Vermont. That's 1777, if you were looking closely. And Windsor County, the state's largest, is home to some of Vermont's most storied towns. Like Pomfret, Vermont, which in October can, frankly, look like what you'd see if you Googled Autumn in the Green Mountains. We were on the trail of, of all things up here, cheese. Okay, that's a joke, but not just any cheese. Ever heard of Tarantays? Two Tarantays cheeses in the entire country. And one of them is made here on this hilltop in North Pomfret, Vermont, where 20 years ago, John and Janine Putnam bought a rundown farmhouse determined to farm here in some way. Ultimately, they were inspired by their own backyard. Pomfret used to be the Jersey breed capital of the country, and now there are only two Jersey farms. So we didn't want to see another one just go by the wayside. They got the cows, but also got tired of shipping all their milk away. So they gathered up their four kids, and using this book as a travel guide, searched in Europe for the best cheese they could make back home on their own Thistle Hill farm. We looked at certain regions and we said, what are the regions of the world that are most similar to Vermont? And it turned out to be the Alpine regions in France. The Tarentaise Valley, to be exact, which is exactly what the Putnams named their cheese. Over the past 15 years, the cheese has also yielded a lot of recognition and dozens of awards. They ship it all over the country, but it's still a small family affair, and John and Janine Putnam keep making their cheese the traditional French Alpine way, right in Little Pomfret, Vermont. In case you're wondering, the cheese is delicious and made for the perfect snack as we wound our way south to Windsor, Vermont, in search of something that's as hard to describe as it is tough to find. You'll want to get to the front of Great River Outfitters, duck behind it to the right of the kayaks, follow through the tunnel, and there by the banks of the Connecticut River is quite likely one of the most unusual 14 acres you've ever happened upon. I describe it as a 14-acre sculpture garden that has rooms in it that take you through your life. A former child therapist, Terry McDonald was inspired by a Japanese version of something similar in Ireland. He already owned this farm field in Windsor. So it took about 15 years. It was all done with friends and family and the paths just sort of evolved over time. The open air rooms, as McDonald calls them, do indeed correspond with periods of one's life, birth, learning, adventure, creativity, solitude, death, and visitors, both young and old, seem to respond with a similarly wide range of emotions. And you take five minutes or five seconds, you do whatever you want. There's no right way or wrong way to do this, that's the point. Like there's no right way or wrong way to do life. During the hour or so we visited the garden, the few visitors seemed as entranced as we were, although apparently you can't entrance everyone. I used to have a guest book at the tunnel. 99 out of 100 were like, amazing, thank you, wonderful, blah, blah, blah. The 99th or the 100th would be like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it is a crazy thing in the best and most creative way like the 30-foot-tall band crafted out of California driftwood that comprises the creativity room. My own favorite room? Respite. Enough said.